Hi again everyone, this is Will at Undo Media. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to clear the media cache in Adobe Premiere Pro to free up drive space and potentially solve minor performance issues. And I'll also show you how to set your cache management policies so you won't ever have to worry about running out of drive space. So what is the media cache and what does it do? It's a collection of helper files, conformed previews, little accelerator files that Premiere Pro generates to make sure your media and projects run as smoothly and efficiently as possible. Every time you import a piece of media into a project, various types of cache files are created and saved in the media cache to improve performance. Most of these files are extremely small, a few kilobytes or less, but Premiere Pro can generate a lot of them. And some audio conform files, for example, can actually be pretty big. So if you don't purge the media cache regularly, these files will accumulate and can eat up a huge amount of drive space. And occasionally, cache files can get corrupted. So if Premiere Pro is acting up, if you're getting a bunch of yellow media pending messages, if audio isn't playing or displaying waveforms, or if you're getting rendering errors or unusual timeline lag, Clearing the media cache is kind of a good go-to troubleshooting tactic. Anytime Premiere Pro is unusually slow or wonky, the first thing I do is clear my media cache. And that seems to solve things 9 times out of 10. And just to reassure you, deleting your cache will not delete your original media. It's totally safe to purge the cache anytime you like, and Premiere Pro will just rebuild it as needed when you reopen a project or start a new one. Okay, so let's free up some drive space. To start, we'll go to our Premiere Pro Preferences. On a Mac, you'll find that up in the top menu bar under Premiere Pro. And on a PC, you'll find it within the Edit menu. So we'll hover over Preferences and go to Media Cache, which will open up the Preferences window. And you can see that there are a number of Premiere Pro preference settings available here. But for this tutorial, we only care about the media cache settings. I'll give you a quick rundown on everything you see here so you know what you're looking at going forward. We've got three main sections, media cache files, media cache database, and media cache management. Media cache files are all those helper files we just talked about. Within media cache files, you also have the option to save.cfa and .pek media cache files next to original media when possible. .cfa files are audio conform files Premiere generates for any compressed audio you import. These are the big drive space hogs I mentioned earlier. .pek files, also known as peak files, contain the visual representations of the audio waveforms you'll see in the timeline, kind of like a thumbnail for audio. So you can save these two types of files beside the original media files or in the same location as the rest of the cache. If you have projects spread out across multiple external drives, or if you're collaborating with others on a project over a network, you might check this box. But I prefer to leave this unchecked so all my cache files are in the same place. The Media Cache Database is a separate directory maintaining a list of links to every file you've imported into Premiere Pro. The files in this directory are kind of like bookmarks for your web browser. They are very small files that prevent Premiere Pro from creating redundancies if you import the same media into multiple projects. But you can easily accumulate hundreds, even thousands of these little files. For both of these, you can set the location, the physical drive and path to the folder where all these files live. Now, where you save these media cache files is part of a much broader conversation about optimizing storage and performance for Premiere Pro. And there's no one right answer. It really depends on your system specs and the type and speed of storage devices you have available. But I can tell you that you want your media cache and your project scratch files on a fast drive, preferably a dedicated SSD drive separate from your operating system and software. And if you have the option, a separate dedicated drive for your projects and source media as well. I normally have my media cache on a separate SSD drive, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I temporarily switched it back to the default location. 
so I could show you these default paths and where you're likely to find your media cache files if you haven't already moved things around. The last section here, media cache management, I'll come back to in a bit. So let's go ahead and delete the media cache. We'll click on delete right here beside remove media cache files. And once we click on that, you'll see two options. The first option, delete unused media cache files, will remove files that were created from source media that can no longer be found. So say you brought some footage into a project at some point and then subsequently deleted it from the project. This will remove any cached helper files for that piece of media. And you can click OK here, and Premiere Pro will search for and remove all of those obsolete files. Now, this will clear up some drive space, but if Premiere Pro is acting up, it's unlikely to resolve any issues. This first option won't remove any potentially corrupted cache files in any active projects. But if there are corrupted files in your cache, the second option will, and it will certainly clear up even more drive space. Deleting all media cache files deletes all the cache files from the current location. But if you have a project open, you'll see that this option is grayed out. Because to use this option, restart Premiere Pro and select this prior to opening any project. Basically, these are all the cache files Premiere Pro can't delete because they're referenced in active projects. So we need to close Premiere Pro entirely and relaunch it. And while this is loading, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. All right, once we're back in Premiere Pro and before opening any projects, we'll go back to our media cache preferences, click on delete again, and now this second option will be available to us. And if we select that and click OK, Premiere Pro will delete all cache files, including any files that may have gotten corrupted along the way, which will at the very least clear up a bunch of space on your drive and might just fix any issues you've been experiencing in your project. Now, the next time you open a project, Premiere will have to rebuild the cache. So opening an existing project will take a little longer. If you're working on a very large project or you're on a tight deadline, you might want to consider doing this overnight or only clearing the full cache between projects. All right, so let's head back into the preferences one more time and I'll show you how to set your cache management policies to have Premiere Pro delete older cache files automatically for you. So down here in this bottom section, you'll see media cache management with three options here. Do not delete cache files automatically. If you select this option, your media cache will just grow and grow until it fills up your drive or you come back in here and purge the cache manually. Automatically delete files older than and a number of days you can set. So once a week on application launch, Premiere Pro will clean out any cache files older than that number of days and automatically delete older cache files when cache file exceeds and a size value in gigabytes. This is the option I prefer. I can basically allocate a comfortable amount of space on a drive, and I know that no matter what I do, Premiere Pro won't allow the cache to grow beyond that size. If the cache does fill up, Premiere will just delete the oldest files to make room for the new ones, and I can predetermine how much space I'm willing to set aside for the media cache. If I have limited drive space available, I can set this lower. Or if I have a large drive available to dedicate a lot of space to the cache, I can ramp this number way up. I'll leave mine at 100, click OK, and that pretty much wraps things up here. If you found this tutorial helpful, please like and subscribe below, and happy editing everyone.